We will continue our conversation now with Glenn Cohen. Uh, he is uh, joining us via Skype. Uh, he's the Harvard Medical Ethics Professor and also here with me on set, Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate. Uh, her lawyer says she's, quote, exercising her rights. But uh, Glenn, as a medical professional, is she out of line with basically defying what should be a self-quarantine? So I should say that I'm a law professor. I don't have an MD, but I will tell you this, which is under the Constitution, the Due Process Clause says that the state can't just willy-nilly confine you without a good reason. And she should have the opportunity, if they want to confine her, they should seek a court order, and she should have the opportunity to say, show me the evidence that somebody who's asymptomatic and fever-free can transmit the disease. And I think they'd have a hard time showing that evidence. Uh, Nick, your take on this. Well, you know, p placing the, uh, the decision in the hands of individual health care workers allows for a wide variety of approaches. The doctor who, uh, who is now infected with Ebola, the one case we know of, he went bowling, he was taking mass transit. I mean, I think that we need a consistent policy that says here's what you should do and, and if you will not do it on your own, this is the letter of the law, we're going to enforce it. And moreover, Nick, as I understand it from reports, and Professor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Glenn, that same doctor apparently when being questioned offered a different story when he was admitted to Bellevue. So there's an ethical problem right there, is there not? That's absolutely right, although I think that cuts the other way in the following respect. When the policy is the moment you admit that you've had exposure, you're at risk, we go into you know the most draconian approach, people are given an incentive to lie, to malinger, and to hide what they're doing. What we want is a sensible approach of monitoring people, and when they become dangerous, taking strong action. But if you take strong action right away, you're going to have people hiding the true facts. Well, uh, the facts of the case, Glenn, you took pains to point out that your training is in the law. Someone else who's been a Harvard Law professor, Alan Dershowitz, appeared on this program yesterday. Here is his take on the situation. Well, I think it's extraordinarily selfish for people like the nurse and others to file lawsuits against public health measures that have been taken to protect the public. Um, when you live in a society like ours, which is interconnected, you have to make certain sacrifices in the interest of public health. Uh, so we hear Professor Dershowitz there. Professor Cohen, uh, you have a different take. Yeah, so Alan Dershowitz, my friend and my colleague, I disagree with him on this. And I think that if he were here, he would agree with me in the following respect. We live in a free country with liberty for all, and individuals should be allowed to say to the government, you're being tyrannical or you are overreacting, and show me the evidence for why you're taking this step. If there was evidence that she was a public health threat, I would totally agree with Alan. But I think that the court is the best place to have that evidence really judged if the state wants to use its police power. Uh, it seems like we've got the classic argument, rights as opposed to responsibilities. Nick, uh, your take. That's often the case with public health. It's, a, it's individual rights stacked up against public health policy. What's good for one individual may not be in the best interest of the greater public at large, and that's what we're balancing here. And, and uh, an, another challenge is this. Uh, amidst all the talk of Ebola, Nick, you brought it up the other day. Influenza, the flu, kills, what, about 30,000 people every year? Every year in a mild year, yes. And, and the challenges for hospitals with the flu, the enterovirus, now the specter of Ebola, things have gotten confusing. Now, again, Glenn, you've made it clear you're not a doctor. You don't play one on TV. You're a law professor, but with a minute left, 30 seconds on the challenges confronting hospitals at this particular time in our history and th this time of year. Huge challenge, and a huge challenge as bad as our hospitals are, the ones in West Africa are even worse. And if you want to contain this outbreak, that's where you need to put your resources. I'll also say with patients traveling back and forth, forget about Ebola, think about multi-drug resistant forms of regular viruses coming back with patients who are traveling abroad. We live in a globalized world, and that means globalized viruses. Final 15 seconds to you, Nick Tate. Take home message. Get a flu shot this year. Do what you can. You do not want to be in the ER this year. My dad got his flu shot, and he didn't even travel overseas. Uh, the name of the book is Patient w Patients with Passports. Uh, Glenn Cohen, not needing a passport to join us electronically this morning from Miami. We thank you, sir. And right here on the anchor desk, our pal Nick Tate. To you both, our thanks. And America's Forum will continue here on Newsmax TV.